everyone. Uh, this is my theory based case presentation. So uh, for my case, we have an individual named Rose. Um, Rose is a 25 year old. Uh, she's a female. Uh, her gender is also female. Um, Rose is from uh, Guatemala. Um, specifically, it's uh, Antigua, Guatemala at the moment. Um, she was raised in a small village in like Western Highlands farming where, where um, she grew up, she was mostly like farming. So uh, what are the presenting issues and reasons for the referral? So Rose is a hospital referral. Um, the reason why she was referred was because she attempted suicide. Uh, that is also the reason why she was hospitalized at the hospital. Um, there, um, the client's reason for being, or for attempting suicide was justified by like childhood trauma from like an extreme situation growing up. Um, I'll dive deeper into this like extreme situation that happened. Um, so, Rose is dealing with a traumatic event from when she was 15 years old. Uh, both her mother and father were murdered by some paramilitary troops when she was growing up. Um, she has memories of her father being shot and mother like being raped and hacked to death with, like, with a machete. Um, Rose was also raped and her sister was raped and she experienced that as well. Um, what led up to Rose attempting suicide was she was her trauma was reactivated when she was coming becoming close with a man who was like interested in her. Um, feelings of like marriage and a romantic relationship were a trigger for this suicidal behavior. Um, she like after ha having those feelings and like being triggered. She became consumed with depression, guilt, shame, and that led to her attempting suicide. Um, I put here that she may like qualify for like a PTSD diagnosis. Um, I wouldn't be able to like clearly say that unless I did a full like the full assessment that the article, the writer of the article did on her. And I'd need to see like how it compared with the DSM-5 to do that. That's why I said she may qualify for it. Uh, so as I said, Rose's father and mother are both deceased due to this incident. Um, I don't know about her sister. Um, in the article, it doesn't really talk about her sister because her sister's not the focus. Uh, I thought it would have been good to know if her sister was around just to see how that like relationship is in the context of her life. Um, Rose currently lives with her uncle and aunt and their children in Antigua, Guatemala. Um, her uncle owns a grocery store where Rose works. Um, I think that grocery store has been of great benefit to Rose. Um, it gave her at least distractions and like ways of coping with like those traumatic events and it gave her a stable environment. Um, so the, the two like implemented theories that I like chose were crisis theory. This isn't the uh, symbol for crisis theory. It's just one that this uh, PowerPoint presentation decided to pull up. And the other one is cognitive theory. Um, I think both of these like theories will fit well with this client. Uh, so first, like, let's talk about crisis theory. Um, this article, uh, Spranger and colleagues, like, they viewed crisis theory as like crisis occurs when difficulty and importance of a problem are larger than the resources available to deal with it. 
So in like the context of Rose, um, her like traumatic event that happened, she was, the resources weren't there for her to cope with it. And so she went into crisis after that. And a crisis, according to them, is like a temporary like state. Um, and then our, our textbook also has like pretty good breakdown of crisis theory. Um, they put it down as like four principles. Crisis intervention is time limited and short term. Engagement and assessment occurs simultaneously and efficiently. A fundamental purpose of crisis intervention is to meet concrete and emotional needs through the provision of services. Uh, crisis intervention must move quickly, uh, seeking to help clients return to previous levels of functioning. So with Rose, I, I would say the crisis intervention she did was she went into the hospital. That's very time limited and short term. Um, the like fundamental purpose of like her intervention was to make sure she was safe. Once you're in that hospital, you are safe. Um, that I believe that's like a concrete need she needed in that moment. Um, and it, it put her in a stable environment to help her return to previous levels of functioning. Um, this other study, Machado and colleagues, like they mapped out an approach to intervention for crisis intervention. Um, the way their approach started was like with a needs assessment. What does the client need? Um, it's essentially a, like an intake. Um, they're figuring out the client's problems. What are they missing? Um, after that, the next step is to like what it hypothesized basically like the expected result from these changes. Um, it, it's pretty essential to hypothesize what will happen if an intervention is to be made. The next like stage after that is selecting a method of intervention that's based on theory. Um, social workers love to find that evidence-based practice and theory is usually one of the best ways to do that. Uh, the next stage is like the conception of planning and implementing like these interventions. Uh, this also is like adapting the, inter the intervention to the specific person. If they have some cultural needs, this is where that adaptation happens. And then the final stage is evaluation of how the intervention worked. Uh, this is like after the intervention um, and checking on the client afterwards, seeing did it work or did it not? Uh, do We need to do more, basically. Uh, crisis theory has lots of strengths and limitations. These are just a few of them. Um, I think like one of the strengths of crisis theory is its flexibility. Um, you can apply a bunch of different like concepts from different theories into crisis theory. Um, there is also, according to our textbook, there's a sizable amount of research that validates the use of crisis theory in assessments and intervention. Um, another strength is that it's pretty straightforward. Um, like it had like that um, model we saw from the last slide, uh, Machado et al. I mean, it's what, what do they need? hypothesize what changes we'll, we'll do, um, selecting a method, planning, and then implementation, and then checking afterwards. Like, that's it. Like, that's not, that's pretty straightforward overall in terms of an intervention. Um, some limitations to, like, crisis theory um, are that due to, like, the number of methods that may be used during the intervention, it's difficult to measure the effect the effectiveness of the model versus the effectiveness of the intervention that you use. So like you may use like, um, I guess like a, like strengths perspective, uh, or you may use like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a particular intervention 
with crisis theory, how do you know that intervention uh, wasn't the thing that was effective and not crisis theory? Um, another like limitation of crisis theory is there is a time limit on the crisis model. If like problems persist past four to six weeks, um, a different intervention may be better. Um, and like sometimes, you know, for a lot of people, their problems are going to last longer than four to six weeks. All right, on to the next one, uh, cognitive theory. Uh, according to Beck and Hai, uh, cognitive theory hypothesizes that everyday psychological problems and clinical disorders are the focus of normal adaptive functions. Uh, the difference between adaptation and psychological disorders is mostly comes down to like small differences in data. Um, they say like some pro a lot of like the reason for problems is like the exaggeration of biases. Um, so if you have like a negative bias that exceeds the maximum that we can take, then the probability of an individual experiencing some type of subclinical or clinical disorder is higher. Um, and then another like study that I looked at was uh, Smith and colleagues. Um, they described cognitive theory in the context of a traumatic like stress. Um, they define it as like the perceived ability to cope with challenges including management of events itself, post-traumatic environmental difficulties, and distress-related symptoms. So in the context of uh, Rose, um, the, the, she clearly uh, experienced some traumatic stress. Um, using like cognitive theory, you would say she was... Um, she was not able to cope with the distress related symptoms or she was she wasn't able to cope with yeah the stress related uh symptoms of like the memories of her mom and dad uh be, like being murdered and her like sister and her being raped she wasn't able to cope with that um she also you you could say you can probably infer that she may like have been triggered by like the environment itself. Um, it, it the context of her being in a new relationship with someone that might be romantic it may remind her of her previous like relationships with her mom and dad. And that triggers the stress response. Uh, cognitive theory has a couple of strengths. Um, it's in our textbook, it breaks down, like it has been established through extensive research. Uh, cognitive theories offer both explanation and an intervention for like application with various different types of clients, groups, and social problems. Um, the concepts and underlying principles in cognitive theories are clear, making it easier for providers to use. Uh, some limitations of cognitive theories are um, that they tend to focus on the individual too much. They don't look at the larger system that the client's operating in. Um, another thing that, and this is one that is kind of like hard for me is cognitive theories give practitioners too much authority over the client as the expert because of like how much the provider is the expert in that situation. So really the provider's driving the care a lot of the time with these and it, it tends to get it can get abused at times with providers and it's something like you have to be careful when using like a cognitive approach so um what is the best fit for rose um 
I think the best answer is it depends. <laughs> um, I know that's not like the best, like concrete answer. Um, you know, crisis theory in my mind is the best fit for the client, um, how they currently presented. Um, this is clearly a crisis situation. Uh, the client attempted suicide. Um, she just, she didn't have enough resources at her disposal to cope with those feelings. So she turned to an extreme like psychological state and attempted suicide. Um, at this point, um, if the point of treatment is like prevent, like at this point, the point of treatment is like the prevention of the next crisis. And you do that by making sure she has the resources available. She also has, and, and these are the resources available to cope. Um, you know, in my context at work, one of the resources we almost always hand out to people is a is the 988 crisis line. Um, that's like the national crisis line. If you start to feel suicidal, um, that and you have access to that crisis line, it gives you an opportunity to speak with someone. It also creates an opportunity for providers to get with clients before they make a suicide attempt. Um, prevention of like suicide attempts is a pretty like big goal, I think in like the behavioral health field and like by providing resources in this, in Rose's context, if she had access to a crisis line, it may have prevented a suicide attempt, not saying she wouldn't have had those suicidal ideations and still needed to be stabilized, but the intervention is, it's harm reduction of, and prevention of like a worse crisis event. Um, However, like if, you know, crisis interventions have no effect on the client's welfare and the client continues to go into crisis after like stabilization, then there should be a transition into like cognitive theory, I think, um, getting at those ability, like those cognitions that to cope with the like traumatic experience. Um, I think that's more of like the long-term goal, but I do think like crisis theory is the best fit for Rose because there was only mention of one suicide attempt. It's not a repeated issue of multiple suicide attempts. If it was multiple suicide attempts, I would have probably considered a more, more on this uh, cognitive theory approach. Uh, some extra considerations to be made for Rose's case. Uh, the social context of the client. Um, in Guatemala, there's a high concentration of indigenous people. Um, that does affect like how you provide care. You need to make sure you're culturally competent to that population, make sure your uh, intervention is culturally competent to that. Um, between 1950 and the 1990s, the uh, Guatemala was under siege, basically. So it was essentially like a war zone. Um, that adds another layer of trauma to like Rose's situation. Like she's continuing to go into these traumatic, um, like she's in a continuously traumatic environment for most of her childhood. Um, where many people disappeared, people were tortured and killed. Um, there's lots of poverty in Guatemala. Um, according to like this article, like interventions need to work in a real life context. Um, to me, that means like the intervention is adapted to the client's needs and environment. Um, another consideration is like Rose had some strengths. Um, she was able to overcome her trauma for the most part throughout her life. She is kind of ignoring it, but she's still living a productive life. She has like a great career um, working in like sales um, in Guatemala. And she's like compensated 
like well for it. Uh, she also has like her faith that she like falls back on. Th th those are like some con like part of like the social context of um, great of uh, Rose, and it helps with formulating the treatment. I think, and if I, I were doing an assessment, I would want to focus more on Rose's strengths. I think. Um, I'd also want to just kind of learn more about the like context of which she currently lives. All right, guys. Um, thank you for listening.